Hello, welcome to another episode of Knitting Up North with Jen and Karina. I'm Jen. I'm Karina. Today's March 16th, 2024, and this is episode number two. I am a knitter, spinner, crocheter from Northern Minnesota, where I live with my husband, my stepson, and our two labs. I am a knitter, a crocheter, and a sewist, and I live with my husband and our kids in Bemidji, Minnesota. And we would love it if you would follow us on Instagram at Knitting Up North with Jen and Karina. And uh, like and subscribe uh, so that you can get notified when new content pops. With that, we left you last time uh, with, a, with a giveaway. We got so many incredible comments. You guys are phenomenal. Um, we learned so much about all of you. Uh, you know, listen, we thought we were going to do this and we were going to be inspiring you and we were going to be the culprits of you casting things on. Um, but it turns out you guys influenced us too. So um, it was wonderful, really. Thank you so much for all of the views, all of the likes, the subscribes, the comments. Mm -hmm. You blew us away. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna do we're gonna do things different. We're not gonna make, we're not gonna make you wait until the very end for the winner of the giveaway. We're just gonna do it out the gate. So um, we are giving away the Heidi and Lana sock set in the colorway cranberry, and the winner of the giveaway is Diana Ballard one five four from Tennessee. So at Diana Ballard one five four from Tennessee. Diana, please reach out to us via email. We can be reached at knitting up north with Jen and Karina at gmail.com. We'll make sure that's down in the show notes for you so you can just grab it and uh, we'll get this on its way to you right away once we get your address. So congratulations, Diana. Yeah. All right, should we uh, go into what we're wearing? Yeah. Want to go? Sure. Cool. This I crocheted a long time ago, um, several years ago. My, I think it's my first garment that That's I ever, so ever made. And um, I was very proud of it. Crocheted the squares, um, piece it all together, put it on, love the fit, and uh, realized pretty quickly that it's very heavy because I knit or crocheted it in uh, Bernat Softy. Oh. And then the color is a Hobby Lobby um, colors, um, the B First Love. Um, they don't carry it anymore, but... Um, so pretty yeah so uh but this is because it's chunky bulky um it's super heavy and very warm <laughs> and so i don't wear it very often and it hangs in my closet and every time i look at it like every day i can see it when i walk in my closet and i'm like oh it's so pretty but yeah barely ever can't wear it on a in a winter like this for sure because it has not been nearly cold enough no to pull that off. <laughs> no for sure it's yeah it's gorgeous we'll um put a picture in so that you can see the entire thing um i think you actually posted I did. on instagram this i already too. i already did earlier yeah. i i just i love it so much that uh, yeah i like when i do put it on i'm like oh i gotta get a pic you know because it comes down to what like mid thigh what do you say it's oh it's it's beyond it's to the back it's of my legs long. the yeah. to to my knees i think almost it's pretty long yeah it yeah. was it's beautiful so pretty and um the pattern i we will put that in our show notes the pattern for it. it yep yeah perfect all right well you guys i did it i finished the uh salty days let's see if i can i will also have a picture of this in um i'll put a picture in it's also um up on instagram but salty days sweater by Veronica Lindbergh, who just had a little baby boy, her Aww. first baby. Um, but it is a beautiful pattern, super fun construction, really easy. I held yarn double. I, it was the, um, oh, the colorway was Thaw. It was Brooklyn Tweed in, um, what was it? Oh, Arbor. And then the color is Thaw. And then the mohair that I used was a long Avec Anna in the color Louvre. And um, if you remember last time, the little tiny twisted ribbing um, at the hem, it just was so tiny. It was hurting my hands and I had, I finished that and then I had one sleeve to go. I'm like, you can do it. So I'm um, super worth it. I love how it fits. Um, I did run out of mohair. So um, I did end up at, or, ordering another skein from the yarnery, but it came just in time. And I think, I mean, don't you know, I think I probably used like 10 yards. Like it was nothing mm. I used, but um, it did help me finish it up. So but yeah, I love it. It is a really good wear. I like, um, they, 
I really like sleeves that are tapered. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the lace pattern is really fun, but I like a tapered sleeve. Um, I've done the big balloon sleeves before. They have their place. They're good. They're just not practical for me. I don't wear them on everything. So I did, um, you know, make sure that these were the fit that I want. I also really like a bracelet length. Mm -hmm. um, lets you kind of do chores and, mm -hmm. and work and do everything you need to do without um, having this bulky drag. So mm -hmm. I really love how it turned out. And, um, you know, aside from my little faux pas with running out of the faux hair, it, um, it was a beautiful make and really fun, super engaging. So... Yeah, have it in my life, my wardrobe for a lifetime. Uh, yeah, it's it. That's a perfect fit on you, Jen. It came out great. Thank you. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. All right, should we go into finished objects? Yeah, you go. You want me to go? Yep. I have a lot of finished objects, so I'm gonna preface all of this by saying, do not be impressed. Do not expect <laughs> this every time. Um, I told Karina, like, I am on a mission. I have an obscene obscene number of whips like I put them all out on the bed I'm like okay we're taking them all out of the craft room I put them on the bed there were so many I couldn't even bring myself to count there are a lot but a lot of what you're seeing these are projects that have been on my needles for years the longest here I'll just start with that one first the longest whip on my needles um I started in 2016 it's a long time. <laughs> wow. So um, this is um, Canyon Road oh. by Casapinka. Oh, it's beautiful. And, you know, I did this. So I learned to knit in 2012, and this was in 2016. Um, I This is back in the day when I was still making all the mistakes, right? So first of all, I know now better than to do a single or a, um, a sweater in single ply. <laughs> So this is all single ply Malabrigo. I don't know what the colorways are. I mean, obviously it was a really long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, the sleeves, I um, just have, they're about a three quarter length sleeve. In the pattern, however, you do the sleeve, it's more of a tapered sleeve, and then you come back to this design um, on the sleeve. And I was just ready to be done. Mm -hmm. I just, so, and um, honestly, when I took this out a couple of um, <laughs> weeks ago, I had... I had this much left. That's it. Everything in the whole thing was done. You except just, for this much little sleeve. tiny bit. You're just like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm over it. It languished for a long time. A long time. But it is um, super comfy. And, you know, I think the reason that um, I let it languish is I just, I feel like the pattern sort of got lost in the color. I was in, I, I think this was like the first color work I had ever done. Mm -hmm. And you can see where it kind of cinches in because I didn't know any yeah. better, right? Like I didn't right. go up a needle size. Like if I mm -hmm. had it to do again, knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. it would be very different. That's how I am with Sunset Highway. Oh, that one's so Man, pretty. I worked so hard on that. And, and, but yeah, the same thing. It's a little tight with the, the color work and yeah. just a lot of mistakes. It being, you know, one of my early sweaters and in, it's in fingering. And wow. Yeah. yeah, but this is the um, Canyon Road by Casapinka, done in Malabrigo. Couldn't tell you the colorways, size four. So it's beautiful. Thank you. You'll wear it. I will. <laughs> it, it'll be really, really good for spring. It's just nice and light and airy, mm -hmm. and it drapes really well. So I'm sure you guys will see it. I'll wear it someday. Yeah, so I have no finished objects. For all of Jen's, I have zero. And so I thought that I would um, stick with the crochet theme I've got going on here and do a blast from the past. Um, and when I first started really getting back into crocheting, I, I learned to crochet when I was nine. My mom taught me. And um, when I uh, started having children, I would just basic crochet little blankets for them and stuff like that. And um, I don't know, around the time my youngest was born, so 12 years ago, I wanted to get more into like, you know, granny squares. And then I became really obsessed <laughs> with granny squares. And um, I don't remember where I saw it, but the fat bottom bag, the fat bottom bag. And then I was, I, I wanted to, that's all I want to do is make those crochet, those <laughs> fat bottom bags. And I, think I have a couple of those too. Yeah. I mean, they're awesome. Well, and I, and yeah. And, and, but I couldn't find a pattern at the time. I could not find a pattern. So what I ended up doing was watching a video um, on YouTube, how to make the fat bottom bag. And then I wrote it all down 
and then I put it as a free pattern in my Ravelry. So if you go on Ravelry, you will see the, it's, I mean, I am no, I'm not a pattern maker. It was, I, I haven't even looked at it in a while, so I don't know, it's, it's probably not that great. But um, if you wanna make one and you're looking for a pretty simplified way to do it, I have it there in my Ravelry. Um, but yeah, so I should show the first one I did that's in, in my Ravelry. I have stuff in there to, to show off the, the fatness of it. Fat bottom. I added um, lace. So I sewed the lace actually on there. Um, that's a stitch marker. That's any. Stitch markers are everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> like, they just on. show up in the craziest places. Yeah, stuck on. And I, um, lined it i lined it and i crocheted the handles i was very proud of it like so proud of it. i remember going um taking the pictures outside and just being so proud of this um i still am i, I mean i have it and um you know i'm still drawn to the fat bottom bag um and then i um then i decided that i i really got fancy with this Ooh. one this one do you want me to hold it so you can sure show. yeah so i um I crocheted the little flowers, and then these are vintage buttons from um, my husband's grandmother had a jar of these, and I think they came, I did a little research, and they were like uh, like long johns, I don't know how else you would, like one onesies, adult onesies from way back in like the 20s and 30s, I think that's what I had figured out, they had, she had a whole bunch of them, and that's where these came from, and I had, I stuck them on here. Um, and of course, then again, the lace, I was, yeah, the yarn, um, I don't remember what I used. I, I don't know, something from Hobby Lobby, I'm sure. And again, I sewed an, a liner. It's beautiful. Yeah. I like the colors. That I color did. story is phenomenal. Yep, I was, at the time, in love with these colors, wanted them, so made another one. And then um, I also made a chevron one, which there is a pattern, I believe, in my on my Ravelry too for the chevron one. Um, and um, I, I made that up myself and it's probably not a very good <laughs> written pattern. Um, I'm sure it's great. Yeah, and I had that, it was actually displayed in um, our friend Steph's, um, she used to have a woolen mill in Foster, Minnesota. And it was, I, I crocheted it out of the yarn spun there in the woolen mill and it was on display in the showroom and someone wanted to buy it and they loved it so much and so I sold that one and I still sometimes go dang I wish I still had that <laughs> How, but I thought I'd make another one I should just make another one you should but, just make another one yeah um so there's that one and then this one gets really crazy I all, remember all this I one. can say is that these colors were I was some um, I out of these these granny squares I wanted and I loved the colors and I just wanted to make the bag with the squares and yeah again I put more lace on it and I found this fabric so the liner Good. yeah I so, like all the embellishments you're doing with I the did, beads I know. and the I ribbon. I don't know. I was just going, I did was just you, being very creative. I was going wild. So when you do your lining and you accentuate with like beads and, and well, not beads, but like with the ribbon, mm -hmm. do you, is that, um, do you use your sewing machine? Yeah, I did. Okay, you did. Cool. So we I shouldn't did. be afraid to sew things. I've sewn all kinds of things. Yarn wise. And, yeah, yeah. And with my sewing machine, I know that, um, you know, there's, uh, it, it's discouraged maybe kind of. But um, I just I went for it, and I have never had a problem. And I, you know, it, I, I didn't snag or anything. Actually, I think I, I, if you look at the stitches, it came yeah, out. It did. Came out pretty well. I was just watching a reel from um, Renee of Chop Shop Stitch. That always tongue ties me, but I, <laughs> it did good this time. Um, but she was showing. She uses her sewing machine to sew in her labels. So at the end of a sweater, when I sew mm -hmm. in a label, I'm like, I like, I shy away from doing it because I don't want to hand sew it. Like I'm done. I want to mm -hmm. be done. Mm -hmm. But um, man, she just zip, 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 zip. She was done. So it's I'm going to try idea. that with this one tomorrow. When yeah. I have some free time. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, if I use, you know, a very light gray colored thread, I'm going to be able to tell. No. So, yeah. 
Wow, those were so fun. Blast from the past. I actually remember um, <laughs> you working on the red, white, and blue one. You know what? This seems like a really good time. So we, um, back to all of your wonderful comments, we got a lot of feedback about um, wanting to hear more about us personally and our friendship and how we got started. So I think today, like, we'll just start with, you know, our friendship story and um, we are not rehearsed, so we're just going to play, play together on this, but, um, you know, in the future, maybe we'll take some questions and address those. But for today, um, our friendship story. So do you want to start or do you want me to start? Uh, my first memory of Jen is seeing her um, at a, um, being introduced to her by our mutual friend Steph at a, um, a, a show, a yarn or Was fiber it at show. The Boys and Girls yep. Club. Okay, yep. And, That's my first memory. And you of had two. the booth thing going and you were busy, busy, busy boss lady because <laughs> she had the, the yarn shop here in town. She owned it, um, Yarn Dance. And, um, and that was my first time meeting her. And then, um, a few of the mutual friends decided to get together and do a, a knit along. But at the time I didn't knit, I just crocheted. So they were knitting a, a cardigan and I decided to crochet a blanket that was very difficult. Um, and it's like a mandala yes, or something, right? Yeah. yeah first, and yeah, I've got, beautiful. speaking of languishing whips, <laughs> I have that thing almost all the way done. You're not done. That no, makes me I feel have, so much. I have like, yeah. Yeah, it's a long time. Misery loves comfort. Oh gosh, <laughs> and it's gorgeous. Why don't I finish it? I don't know, it but I have beautiful. to sit on the floor and and do this certain crochet to get them, you know. And my back starts to hurt, whatever, you know. But I should just finish it. Should just take it in bed one day. Yeah, just well, that was a good Sunday, idea. And then there's no weight. You're not you need to dig it down. out. Yeah. yeah, it is a beautiful blanket. But anyways, okay. I remember. Okay. Then we spent <laughs> we just spent time together um, that way, and we went to the trip to. Um, to Grand Marais. Mm, that was so fun. That was a lot of fun. Really got to spend time with Jen um, and our other friends that went and we just had a great weekend in it. It was so fun. And you, you tell Yeah, so my first memory of you is also at the um, the event. It was a local, I, I wouldn't call it a fiber event. It was more artists. You know, there were all kinds of crafts and, and just things. And um, I remember just being super drawn to you. Like you're just the sweet, literally you're the sweetest person I've ever met. Like. Just so kind and so nice and um, complete opposite of me and that like, I'm just out there. I'll, I'll say hi, I'll tell you whatever. And you were so quiet. And then we had just this instant connection. We talked and, and I was like, I remember thinking to myself, what a precious human. Like I just, you were helping somebody at the time and I was just like, but then I was busy back to it. And then we got that chance to hang out and knit uh -huh. together. And really, I mean, all these years later, how long has it been? Like 2012 is when I bought, when I started to knit and bought the yarn shop. That's a whole nother story. Right. And that's <laughs> crazy. And that's when Isabella was born. So my youngest. And so, um, it had to be like, I think I started like, you know, when you first have a kid, you, um, you stay home a lot. And I don't, I don't think I got out very much until she was, you know, nearly two. You yeah. Know, Cause that's I what I was going to say. It was like 2015. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, you know, we started to do more, more and more together. That's been 2015. So what is that? Almost 10 years mm -hmm. that we've been hanging out on the periphery. And then I would say within the last four, four or five years, well, maybe six, because it was, you know, pre 2020. Mm -hmm. So, um, we started to get together for lunch and knit dates, breakfast mm -hmm. and knit dates. I mean, anything we could think of to get knitting in the mix. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, 2021, 2022, we really started traveling together, doing a lot of fun things together. Um, we, I mean, there's weekends where we'll just grab our sewing machines and our yarn and yeah. we'll get in the car, we'll book an Airbnb and man, we don't get out of our jammies all weekend long. We're like Uber eats, mm -hmm. <laughs> like we don't, we don't even leave the, the Airbnb and just sit and we hang out. We watch eighties movies. <laughs> Dateline. Yeah, Dateline is one we, we both. Like, what are you What are you watching? Dateline. Dateline. <laughs> it's always, yeah. That's what we did at sweater camp every night. Because you're tired. Like you're interacting all day. And we wanted to I know, yeah, knit together but, and be together. But we just didn't really. We were done talking. So mm -hmm. we just watched Dateline. Dateline. It was good. All right. Well, that is our friendship story. I wouldn't change it for the world. That, that our core group of friends 
you know, they've sort of disbanded. One of them moved away. Another one is, you know, super busy. Don't, you know, talk to them a whole bunch. Lives kind of further than, um, you know, Karina and I do. But um, I am so blessed by this friendship. I'm oh, so for sure. glad that um, I have. I mean, it's a plus that you knit, <laughs> let's be clear, but I do love just, um, you know, if you didn't, I would still love you. So. Oh, well, yeah. Jen makes me laugh. Um, and, and I always feel so much better after, uh, spending time with, with her. I just feel powered up. Same. Power up. Yeah. You're my people. Yeah. All right. I have more FOs again. Don't be impressed. These are, um, many, many years in the making. In fact, um, Let's go. You saw these last time. Mm -hmm. They're finished. They're done. Yay. So this is my um, my treadmill or, or walking pad knitting. Um, I guess you don't need to see both of them. But yeah, this was fun. Just played with the, the toe a little bit, doing some striping, peekaboo at the top. Um, these are a um, 72 stitch, just vanilla sock pattern, heel flap and gusset. Um, rounded toe because you know I am a knit sip happy rounded toe fan um, but yeah told you a lot about these last time but they they are complete so that is another one um, I have three more pairs of socks as finishes so the next one that I want to get into this is um, these have been on the needles since last year and those are amazing oops um, so I, here's two promise <laughs> Um, but these are the Contrast Blast Socks by, by the Stephen West, and um, they were a mystery knit along. I don't know, it was like last June or July, I can't really remember, but I do remember knitting them on the boat a lot last year. I love the colors. The yarn is from um, last year, Karina and I went to the Minnesota Yarn Shop Hop, mm -hmm. and um, was it Muse 2320? 2320, yeah, it'll be in the, in the show notes, but... Um, it's a beautiful little shop in Hastings, Minnesota, and um, the dyer is, um, she just does amazing things. Um, the pink is Oak, and the blue is Holy Schmoly. They're just super fun. Look at the detail on the heel flap. It's yeah. like so fun. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, the, the uh, gusset decreases are a cable. The toe is a broken rib. Never done anything like that on a sock. Right, you do all like the different patterny type stuff, but can't say I've done a pattern in a heel or a, a braid on a, a decrease. So they were super fun. Again, I put these away probably in the September time frame. Just put them away. I was like, I'm. I didn't knit on them religiously. I'm not a monogamous knitter. I knit on nothing religiously, <laughs> but I put them away. I, thankfully, I put them away when I was on the second sock and past the the decrease, the um, gusset decrease. So literally, I had this much to go. Like, what is that? A couple of inches. So I got them done. Um, but that is finished object number three. Um, let's see. The next ones I'll show you. Um, so all of the socks I've shown you so far are hand knit. These are cranked. Well, they're actually a combination. Um, mm -hmm. So I cranked the um, leg and the foot on um, my Earl, Bar Earl Bucker Gearheart Speedster. And then the toe, the heel, and the cuff are all um, afterthought. So those are hand knit and afterthought just using, I mean, this is stash. I can't even tell you what this um, blue color is. This is a, um, a row one mini. So those are complete. And the last finished object and last pair of socks are coming to a theater near you. They are not yet released. So these socks, um, yeah, I'll let you just hold them. Um, these socks are called Titty Gaga. And you might be <laughs> like, well, that's a name. <laughs> it is. So the Nancy Wheeler of Knit Sip Happy, she is a, she's just an, I've talked about her before. I won't have a Nancy Love Fest, but she is an amazing sock knitter. And every year this time, she um, does, uh, releases a sock pattern in support of breast cancer. So this will be a fundraiser for breast cancer. It's a sequel to last year's. Um, last year's were called, does anybody watch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Prime? So she's a comedian back in the day when it's not popular for women to be outside of the home doing anything, especially mm. not being like a real graphic, you know, comedian. And so her stage manager is, um, her stage manager is just funny in the show, but 
um, she would get nervous before she would go on stage and her manager would just slap her real hard in the back and say, tits up and go out there and have a good show. So last year's socks raised a lot of money for breast cancer. They were called tits up. This is Titty Gaga, the second one. See this beautiful so um, design. Mm. She also does um, very cool designs on the back. So there's always just interest everywhere. I'm going to take this one out and show you because it is pretty cool. So that runs down the back. Mm -hmm. It just looks like a row of boobs. But <laughs> these will be coming out the beginning of um, April. Look for the pattern release and um, pattern proceeds for a period of time will go to women's breast cancer. So, um, you know, any support that you can muster up would be amazing. Yeah. I'll post it. We'll post it on our um, Instagram page when they go live. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Well, I am feeling good about things like my needles. My craft yeah. room like looks a lot better. <laughs> There's bags put away. It's not quite as cluttered. Yeah. I have many more to go, but um, I am feeling good about the balance of casting on to uh, finishing these mm. days, which mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. All right. Should we get into some whips? Whips. Whips. Mm. Let's do it. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Sure. I will go first. Perfect. Um... Well, here is somewhat oh of a languishing goodness. whip. But Not too languishing. I definitely want to. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I definitely want to be finish this. The light's not. It's not doing it justice right now, no. is it? But. Yeah, it's okay. So this is out of the... Um, the advent we got from um, Suburban Stitcher, the um, Dreaming of Pink. Um, it's a fade. So um, I'm holding mine with mohair, just a cream colored mohair to make this. And this is the, um, I'm drawing a blank, what's it called? Uh, the Dust of Snow. Dust of Snow. And who's this one by? Dust of Snow? Yeah, it is Helen Stewart. Oh, she makes such great advent patterns. Yeah. Yep. That's so cool. I know. I'm... And are you holding it double? Yeah, so it's the fingering with the mohair. You just said that. Yep. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Beautiful. Yes, I really, I love it, and I want to knit more on it. Um, I stopped. I was, I was doing such a good job every day, um, opening up the advent and then knitting with it, and I had, I had three advents this I didn't it happened anyways <laughs> um, and one I set aside one because Jen and I are gonna do something fun with with the one that I set aside for um July but anyways um the other two I cast on wraps and um and I was every day I was doing it and I did really good but then I decided it's very hard to um buy things for my husband for Christmas um, I, I just, I couldn't think of anything. And I had this sweater I had started for him. It was a languishing whip. Um, and I'm like, I'm going to finish that for him for Christmas. And so I had a, I, I didn't really knit on anything else. Once I decided that I was going to do that for him, I knit him a hat also. So I made him a hat and a sweater. And, um, and that sweater was like a marathon. I think it was, it was, it's this, if you go on my Instagram, there's a picture of him and it's this, you know, I'll show it one day on here. Um, yeah, and that's why I ended up not being able to finish my advents. And uh, but you got his sweater done, and he loves it. He's he yes, he he has worn he it. He wears it. Oh yeah, he I've knit him a lot of sweaters, <laughs> and he wears them. He loves. He's a sweater guy, and he he wears them, and people are always blown away that I knit that, <laughs> and I love that. He'll come home and and tell me he got compliments, and people are just surprised I knit it, and I'm like, huh. Oh. I love that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so my first whip is a crochet and I am holding it in this beautiful bag from, you'll never guess, my favorite, Tanny Casey. I'm a Tanny Casey bag girl all day long. I have plenty of others that I love, but uh, there's really a time that she posts something that I can resist. I can't. What I am, um, I'll show um, you what I'm making in a minute, but I'm going to start with just, um, this is an advent from the beautiful Amanda of Sweet Skein of Mine, who we had the pleasure of meeting in um, Rhinebeck. 
this is what I have left. So my next color will be this. And then um, I always put it on double so I know which end of the ring to start on. And then I'll, I'll work my way around. But um, that's what's left of the advent. Um, the, it came with um, Cookies for Santa is the main it I was love a, that. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. You're <laughs> going to see in my project that I'm using this to separate each of the colors. Um, and then what I have left is going into a magic knot ball. I don't know what I'll do with it, but um, it I did have some left. Now I won't as I go because of course the blanket is growing. So this is called the Raspberry Road Blanket and it is crochet. It's amazing. So just starting with, um, you can see the colors. Like as I go, I can barely make one round <laughs> with a mini, which is great. But um, this is really cool. So this is called Jacob's Ladder. I don't know if you can see, but you knit, uh, or sorry, you crochet um, like five, you chain five, and that gives you your separation. And then what you're doing is basically knitting them up. So you can see that you just weave them up as you go but super fun. This is actually going to be for my mother-in-law. Um, it was, it was intended for my mother-in-law for Christmas. She'll get it this Christmas for sure, but it is so much fun. So much fun. It's really pretty, Jen. And if you haven't checked out Amanda from Sweet Skin of Mine, I really, really enjoy her yarn. It is such a pleasure to work with. Um, but yeah, this is her advent. So much fun. So and her podcast is so, so fun to good. watch. I, I love I love it because she does the, like the cooking and the and stuff in there and that's totally my thing, you know, the baking, yeah. the cooking and spending time with her family and I love watching. Cuz she's more vloggy. I have tried recipes of hers and um she just does a bunch of fun stuff. Recently she's been on a taking pottery classes, so it's just fun to watch her journey. Um I didn't unfold. talk about Oh yeah. What I was uh, this is what the the dust of snow is in, in the, um, the, I've had this for a few years. Uh, Della Q makes one very similar now, um, train case. And I uh, really, I love that. And I have it in there like that. I love it. It's heavy duty. It is heavy duty. Yep. Fun. All right. My next, my next whip is a new cast on because you know, when you get things off the needles, you got to throw stuff back on. So this is in my um, Black Pearl Magic. And um, she just does such beautiful work. The zippers are incredible. Oh, yeah. We picked, uh, you know, she does shop updates and I have not been able to make a one. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll set timers like I try. But we did catch her at Cake mm -hmm. And... Um, Man, we got, it was so good. Here, um, the college BSU, um, it's hockey right now and they're doing really well. And so um, when we go watch the games, you know, you, you can't bring purses in anymore. You can't, um, but they let me bring the, I have the exact same one and they let me bring that in. And um, so that's what I use mine for a lot is when I go to the- To events. To events at BSU and, um, and have my knitting in there and yeah. It's great because, you know, clear bag. I love it. Well, this is um, the very baby start to the Nabelli tea. Oh, yeah. So this is um, bottom-up color work. It's not much to show right now, um, but it's bottom-up color work. So basically, these two yarns are going to play together at the bottom in the color work. And I should put them this way because the most predominant color is the orange over the, the pink. And I'll tell you the colors um, right now. So this is peony pink. This is um, linen quill by Pearl Soho. I don't know that I have a favorite yarn, favorite yarn, but this is definitely up there. The linen quill by Pearl Soho. It's a beautiful blend of um, alpaca. So it's 50% fine Highland wool, 35% alpaca, and 15% linen. I have made, I mean, the, the half and half triangles wrap is, you know, how I was first introduced this yarn. Um, but I've made sweaters. I've held it double with mohair. I just truly love it. This color is sweet potato, same yarn base. 
And then as you get, so this color work is gonna go in and out and I'll put the picture up so you can see what I'm talking about. And then you're gonna have the blue and the blue is called like denim something or other. It's um, dark denim. And the dark de denim is, it's a little bit of, um, you know, a chart at the bottom and then you go into this dark denim and it'll you'll work the top of the tee with the dark denim. And I just love this color palette. I'm really mm -hmm. into neutrals right now. And this is this really isn't neutral, but it's a super fun summer mm -hmm. um, color story. So I really love it. It's going to be so pretty. Yeah, and I'll put a picture up so y'all can see. Now, um, I maybe should have talked about these before, but I did swatch. And I'm super glad I did. Now, these are not good swatches. They, You know what they are? They're great swatches. And you know why? They told me what I needed them to tell me. <laughs> but they are baby. <laughs> oh. They're so tiny. Okay, so this is the first one I did. Um, just to see, you know, did I like the yarn? Um, and, you know, how was it going to play? This was on the first needle. This is super dense. I don't know if you want to feel it. But it's like, I was like, I don't, that doesn't feel like oh. a t-shirt to me. It feels like really staunch. Yeah, when you told me that, I didn't know what you meant. But yeah. It's very, it's very dense. Yeah. So then um, I I went up a needle size. No, I went up two needle sizes and I did this and it's a little bit um, two needle sizes and did this on top. And you can see it's a little bit, can't really see on camera, but it is a little bit see-through. Right. Yeah. So then I went down a needle size. So I landed between what was recommended, where I jumped right in between. And that's the fabric that I really like. So it's coming out really nicely. Again, super baby whip. You can see that I have um, my, my donut stitch shoppers. I love these. Um, but you can see throughout that I have um, all of these stitch markers, just the light bulb stitch markers. So as I do color work, and you probably already know this, but my preference is, especially when I'm late at night doing color work and my eyes start to get really heavy, <laughs> um, I like to put light bulb stitch markers um, as a means of the start and the end of a repeat. Um, and so that way, if I get to the end and I'm like, I mm -hmm. wasn't supposed to end there, I know the mistake is within here mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. that I have to count and look uh, yes. all the way back. That's so, so smart. Lesson learned. But um, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the Novelli Tea by Caitlin Hunter. And I'll put a picture up and everything's in the show notes. Okay. So my, I had to, in Sasky. I had to, I wanted to get to the bunnies, but um, my close friends and family all know that I love bunny rabbits. It's my favorite. Yes, I have horses. They're my second favorite. I have bunny rabbits in my house decorating all year long. They make me happy. So I keep them there. Um, Remember when we were at Twitter camp in the room that um, was all bunnies? Mm -hmm. Like it had just little bunny decor. I was like, Karina, we got the wrong room. Right, so yeah. Gonna <laughs> yeah. And so I didn't get to the bunnies yet. But this is where I'm at so far. So pretty. Yeah, I'm really excited about finishing this. It is beautiful. These little half moons. So I just it's started very the soft. The very the top of the um, the bunny rabbits are just right here. So it, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow I hope I will get to the bunnies and. Um, is this a um, sorry real quick? Is this a twisted rib? Yeah, I did that. That's because it is so neat. That's um, the pattern is just normal, but I wanted to do that. You so you did do twisted knit. Yes, it's I, 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 um, I love it. I modified it. Yeah, as you should. If and you, you can. Want. I mean, I, now that now that I've knit so many sweaters, I know what I like, the look that I like, and and um, and how I want things, you know, to fit. I like that that I've become um, so savvy that I can I can adjust something if I want to, you know. Um, and figure it out, make it, make it mine. And, and I think, um, pattern designers, you know, are, are okay with that. They want you to want, they want you to wear the sweater, right? And I've got sweaters in my closet right now that I worked really hard on and I don't wear them. And I wish I would have known better. And actually there's one that I wasn't wearing, um, for, uh, since I knit it because it had the flared sleeves. And, um, and then one day I'm like, that's it. This is too beautiful for it to be sitting there. I ripped the sleeves out and redid them Good for you. To, and, and I'll wear it on another podcast and I'll talk about that. But, um, anyway, so that's Sasky by the Petite Knitter. Um, and, um, yeah, I am using, there's a story behind this. Uh, I was on road trip with my husband 
to Montana. That's um, I grew up in the Bitterroot and Montana. Um, and we were going, um, you know, I honestly can't remember if this was one of the times we took the kids to visit family over there um, in the Bitterroot and then did the round trip back down to Wyoming and, you know, uh, Devil's Tower and Mount Rushmore. Um, but in um, Broadus, we went down that way to Broadus, um, Montana. And um, there was this little gift shop and um, there was yarn in there. And um, that is where I got this. And it is, I've never heard of it, but it's um, Imperial Stock Ranch Wool, the um, American wool tradition. I've had this for several years. Um, probably, well, Isabella was a baby if it was that trip. So um, at least 12 years um, and um, or close to 12 years, or it could have been a couple of years after that when I went for like a, a school reunion. Mm. And um, I can't remember what trip it was that I got this, but yeah, it's from Oregon and um, it's sport weight and it's pretty, pretty rustic. It is pretty rustic, but it's also soft rustic. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I actually I, got it to knit Micah's sweater, my husband. This is the second time you've done that to him. This, I, it's, a, it's only the second it's episode. A, it's a trend, I think. <laughs> I, I did. I actually cast on a sweater. Girl, you just keep telling him it's for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you do whatever you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honey, I'm I'm going <laughs> I'm going to knit a sweater for you out of this. And, yeah. Anyways, um I did. I cast on a seamed sweater back then right after I got this and um nope. I did, I wasn't no, I'm I probably could do it now, but it was way over my head then and so um with when I decided to do the Saski, um I knew this was going to be perfect. Um, I wanted to, so I ripped out what I had done and I'm, I'm, it's getting used after how many years, 10 years, maybe, um, it's getting used. And the other one is, um, the white or cream is, um, this, and there's a little bit of a halo to it because it is, um, llama luxury, this baby llama. Oh, oh yes. It's baby. It's hundred percent baby llama. It is so soft. Yeah. And I think I got that um, in a kit, like um, not a kit, but like a, a, a box, mm -hmm. a yarn box at one point, like, you know, uh, way back. Uh, probably is. I probably had it as long as I've had this. And I didn't know what I was had. And there was two little hanks of it. And I'm like, I don't know what I would ever do mm -hmm. with that. But then I remembered I had it when I saw the Saski and I'm like, totally, I'm going to, I'm going to go grab that. And um, yeah. It's working out perfect. It's. I just... want a bodysuit made out of it. You should make that dress out of something like this. Baby llama. Oh, it's so soft. It's very soft. It's delicious. It's it's uh yeah pretty dang wonderful. I'm a little envious of your bag though. I, I know never you never got, got, a got one. Supply Co. And they're no longer right. Nope, no more. You I could know. actually. I don't they know. Have a pattern. Uh, Michelle. Yep, they have that. But Michelle of um. Nandi Knitwits. Yeah, she was selling hers. I don't know if she still has it. But with the buttons and everything on it. And um, she sold it because I was oh. getting ready to message her and I was like, oh, oh it sold. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, and it was blue, like it was a darker color. Was like, yeah. yeah. So this is my fringe bag. I actually, when I got this, it was like a month later they stopped making the bags. And I was like, oh. It's just such a good quality yep. canvas. And I covered mine in pins too. And I have all, all the stuff that actually there's back in the day. I mean, I got the. The fringe little, uh, you know, notions. Oh, cool. And it's got, a, you know, all kinds of stuff in there. Fun. Heavy duty, you know, metal zipper on this. Um, yeah. I love how you have all your pins on it, too. I need to figure out something to do with my pins. Yeah. Well, yeah, stick them on a bag. Vintage now. It's going to be vintage fringe. Yeah. <laughs> but people still talk about them. That's how, how, um, you know, I, I, everybody really liked them. Yeah. I'm glad I got one. I use this one actually a lot because it's that, that waxed canvas here and um, it's it's sturdy and um, and it's the color that if you get a little coffee on it or something, oh well, you can't tell. Oh, can't tell. All right, well, my last whip is a spinning whip. And I think I said this last time, but I'm a new spinner. 
So um, any and all advice is welcome. I'm just figuring it out. So I am the type of learner I learn by doing. I can um, read and read and read and and that helps for sure. But until I do it, it, um, it just doesn't click. So uh, I've been spinning for a couple of years on and off. And um, I am spinning, I wanna spin for the melt shawl. So I'll sh I think I actually have that in my dream knitting. Mm -hmm. But I bought this um, from Bricolage Studio. Where, um, this was from Indie Untangled. So mm, okay. when we went um, to Rhinebeck, Indie Untangled, I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's just, just- I love that color. It's got some sparkles in it. So it's um, colorway is Carnelian and it is uh, Coopworth, Corydale, Tussa, and um, Angelina. So this is two ounces and um, this is it spun up. Ooh. So I feel like you can see. So good, Jen. It is so good. So I have an Ashford. Um, I had an Ashford Joy. I still have an Ashford, Ashford Joy. I find that in my life with um, work and family and just any moment you can steal to craft, I do a lot more spinning now that I have the Ashford electric um, spinner, the, the electric wheel, because it's portable. I can sit with my family, enjoy my family, and still spin. Um, so I am going to do, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm consulting um, a book. I'm going to put this down and just um, show you what I'm gonna spin it with. Mm. So um, I love that it has like um, some of these rusty qualities you can see. I think it will complement. I love green. Um, this is Urban Girl Fibers. Urban Girl Yarns, not fibers. Anyway, um, this is four ounces and each of these were two. So together I have eight ounces, four ounces of each. So um, I will spin this one, and then after I spin this one, I'll weigh this out into two two-ounce quantities. So I'll split the braid, split it in half, probably split it in half again. This one is Targi Bamboo in Tessa, an 80-10-10 blend, and then I will ply it. I'm so new at spinning that, um, and I'm still practicing like with my draw, so I'm going to see how the single plies come out and then I'll determine what I want to do with it. If I want to chain ply it, if I want to, you know, um, a two ply or triple ply, I don't know what I'll do, three ply. But before I do anything, I am going to consult Yarn Texture. So I bought this book at Rhinebeck and um, it is, I, so it's got some patterns in it, which is okay, cool, but um, I love that it's got this whole section on sort of like plying, right? So it goes through how to chain ply and, and I can watch videos, that's great. But this book really shows you what happens to the fibers when you split them, when you take a braid and split it a different way. So if I take this braid and I let's say I split it and I, if it were more variegated, right? Like this is, this is pretty solid, but you can start spinning at one end or the other end and get different colors to play together. And this book really helps as um, I, you know, as I consulted, it really helps me think about like, what might the fiber do? Um, but I am on an adventure, I am learning. And um, so I'm just gonna play around in this book and see after I get the singles spun up, what I want to do with applying. I've also been watching um, Casey from Young Folk Knit. Mm. And she, oh, her last, I can't remember when it came out, it was her last episode. And I just sat there mesmerized watching her spin to this lovely music. I even yeah. rewound it and watched it again <laughs> because her rhythm, the rhythm and the music, it's just, that's what I love about spinning. And that's why it has my heart is mm. it's just the, it's this muscle memory. No, how, no matter how long I'm away from it, I just get right back into it. And, and humans have been doing it for so long. Mm. It's, it's, um, it's a connection to mm -hmm. past. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm super excited, um, to see how these play up together. I have a lot of hand spun at home. I started knitting with my hand spun around the first, like probably six I did. 
are probably going to be some sort of like marled soapy shawl where gauge like doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The weight of the mm -hmm. yarn doesn't matter. I don't know because they're all over the place, but it's part of the learning process mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. So like the progression of sweaters I have in my closet. Yeah. You totally <laughs> can see. Yeah. <laughs> There's this, you know, yeah. Progression of, of as, as you go, um, learning and getting better and and it's so cool. Like there's so many resources available to us. I think about, oh, what were you trying to do yesterday? So my husband and I, all the clocks in the house changed, of course, with, mm -hmm. um, you know, we sprang forward for um, daylight savings time. <laughs> I changed all the clocks and I could not get the microwave to go. And um, I just didn't have time to, to play with it. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, man, what will we do without Google? Clocks are all right in the house now. Like life is good. I learned to knit on YouTube. Like what do you? Yeah. What more do you need? I learned how to knit on YouTube too, and and so much crochet. Like I I all the crochet, all the different stitches and stuff. Same with same with knitting. But mm -hmm. what I remember is crochet and trying to do the the different stuff and having to watch those videos very slowly, you know, and learning. And then after a while, it sticks in your brain. And then yeah. you, you were taught and you know it and it's there. And, but sometimes I got to go back and refer to, to things, whatever. But a lot of it, especially with knitting, like uh, there's things that I, I cast on. One of them I have here, um, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, I remember casting that on just a couple of years ago and feeling like this is a little overwhelming. I don't, I cannot see where this is going. I'm not understanding what I'm doing here. And um, it ended up becoming a, a very languished whip. But now when I picked it back up, I'm like, uh, I, this would seem so hard, but oh my gosh, this is not hard. I, I yeah. know it now. I know what I'm doing. I see what's happening and, um, yeah. And I'll never stop making knits that don't teach me something. I know. Yeah. Oh, it, it's right. so fun. How many times did I say to you, I can't do that. And you'd be like, yes, you, yes can. you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Oh, I remember when I first started, I might've said this last time, like I was like never going to knit with fingering. Now look at <laughs> it. Yeah. Now you're. Yeah. Anyways, uh, just oh, so just um, DK socks, uh, vanilla. Um, I I cast these on what two weeks ago. Uh, my husband took me down to Minneapolis. He had a a business thing, and um, we happened that our hotel happened to be really close to Amazing Threads. So um, I when he left for his thing, I went to Amazing Threads and hung out with my friend Bonnie for a little while our friend Bonnie and um and you know chatted and I did some shopping and so this is um oh gosh here I'll just find a little tag in here are these DK yes DK I, I got DK socks um on the needles right now oh, too. I can't I find the them. tag um it's Lobby and Amy um uh DK and I had the tags in the back but I can't I must have left it somewhere or got okay. fell out. We'll put I don't it in the know show the, notes. Yep, show notes. I'll have the colorways, but yeah. I love the um, contrasting color you chose. It picks, it picks up those greens. That's what I was trying to. Bonnie silver. will probably remember me having having that. Um, remember me having that conversation with her. I was trying to get a good contrast. So this is the second one. Honestly, I could sit down. I, I probably could have this done by tomorrow if I sat and, and watched a couple datelines. That's the beautiful thing about a DK and Dateline. Mm. You just go. And uh, the ones I finished for my husband, he's worn them. He he loves them. And uh, they're slippery on the hood floor, so he's like, woo. He, <laughs> first time he stepped, I'm like, yeah, you got to be careful. Anyways, uh, I great. like taking these uh, if we're going to go somewhere. So if we're going to go, um, you know, play some pool tabs or, or you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, oh, uh, I do a lot of, um, we like, my husband really loves going to trivia so trivia nights and that's kind of a thing around here right now um and so we go trivia I don't think that I help very much I do. <laughs> he you says I, this then by <laughs> yeah I'm not very they know all the stuff like uh, there was one question about flowers I'm like I, I know that one and horses oh I know that one but yeah overall I'm not very helpful but I do a lot of knitting during trivia and the and those are great yeah, DK way. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right. You have one more. I'm out. I, oh, you are. Yep, that's all the... I I took all my uh, screen time on FOs yeah, this time. So. Okay, so this one 
is a Neutrino, the app, the Neutrino app. Um, Which should we just talk about that for a minute? If you haven't, um, Neutrino is an app and it is a beautiful app. So mm -hmm. they have patterns that you exclusively buy via the app. Mm -hmm. And then the app is um, is a very good learning tool. Oh, so yeah. like, it keeps track of, you can keep track of your colors. You can change your colors. You can see what the, you know, what they look like. You can, it gives videos. So if you get to a part where it's like, let's say you're doing something cable-like, um, it will show a video that shows you like, a camera up top, somebody literally doing a cable. So you can see it. You don't have to consult YouTube. You don't have to go out, but Neutrino. Oh, it looks like that Neutrino. The little octopus. Yeah. Uh, squid. So yeah. Squid um, octopus. If you have anybody in your life who wants to learn in it, that would be a yes. great resource for them. Something that you could buy them a subscription to that would um, really help them. If you're trying to learn something new, um, check out their patterns and they may have a pattern with videos and, and aids that will help you, but it's a really good thing. Yeah. So I, um, I don't remember when I discovered it, but it was during, you know, it was like 2021, I think, or 2020. It was, we were supposed to go to Vogue Beauty Live Seattle. Mm -hmm. and they were going to launch at then. Yep. And I think it was around that time. So it was right when COVID started. Um, and I, that's how, and, uh, they would do, um, uh, zooms instead to launch their, their app. And I jumped on that, I, you know, anything to, to entertain me and feel a part of something. And, and so I loved it. They were very, um, you know, very kept me, I think kept me level because I had something to look forward to and do. And I wanted you know, um, to get on those Zooms and chat with the with the other people. It was fun. You did it too. Yeah. And the, the ladies, they're so lovely. Mm -hmm. Allison and Andrea, mm -hmm. they're sisters. Um, they're sisters who are super smart with long careers before this, mm -hmm. who gave it all up and invested everything in um, this app as a belief that it could propel people into, you know, learning to knit or their next era of knitting or, you know, learn. And it is you should check it out. Oh, Neutrino. definitely. I love it. Um, yeah. And I did a lot of the kits early on. Uh, the, uh, the reason I, I tapered off with that is just because I can't keep up. I, yeah. I'm like, I, I, again, I'm not a monogamous knitter either. Um, I'll be, I'll start, I love something. I'll be knitting it, knitting it. And then all of a sudden something else. And over here, I'm like, oh, I think I need that. And I'm going to knit it. And I'll cast that on. And that's kind of what happened here. So that's why the kits, the kits didn't, I couldn't continue that because I was just piling oh. up. So, uh, oops, I was going to finish that row and I didn't. That's okay. Oh, dang. Anyways, it's a wrap. It's beautiful. Yeah, I um, am impressed with the work that I had gotten done on it <laughs> um, when I did because I remember feeling the app really helps you, right? You uh, gives you all the little videos on how to do things and stuff, but sometimes your brain just doesn't compute at the time. And I, I got this far of, there was like a knit along with it. Um, and I stuck with it, did the knitting during the little knit along we were doing. And then, yeah, then I put it away. So it's just like my brain. And, um, but I have a plan for this. I am going to finish it. This is, is I have till my birthday, which is in July. I have a dress that I've owned for a long time and, um, and I'm going to wear it on my 50th birthday in July and um and I am it will this will go very well with that with that dress um and that's my mission and um that's how I know I'm gonna finish it because I want to wear this with the dress to an event that I have to go to on my birthday and so I'm gonna make it you know um I'm just I'm gonna wear what I want to wear and um be wrapped up in 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 my knits um I, you know, that's like my favorite thing to do is wear my, my knit. So the As yarn you should, yep. The yarn is little Fox Vixen, um, little Fox Um, it is, this colorway is tea room and, um, yeah, it's a uh, fingering white. Oh. What's the blend? Cause if it doesn't have silk in it, it feels like. Uh, 80% super wash merino, 20% silk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super soft. 
And when I get it all blocked, I'm sure it's going to be just beautifully drapey yeah. around that dress that I want to wear, which is this like um, dusty pink color, of course, oh, with these sure. big blue <laughs> flowers on it. Um, I've only worn it one time several years ago to a wedding and um, but I'm going to wear it on my 50th. Love it. So. All right. Shall we uh, get into some dream knitting? Dream knitting, yes. All right. You first? Sure. Okay. I have um, three. So I don't know if y'all saw, um, I'm an Andrea Mowry fan. I'm a fan of a lot of designers, but her new um, shawl melt is just gorgeous. So it's three colorways and a worsted weight. And it's just got, um, you know, a variety of, I'm sorry, it's not worsted, it's DK. And it's got a variety of, um, you know, just all the interest. It looks like you have some fan and feathers, some brioche. I just love a good shawl with color play and mixing of stitches. And I can never have enough shawls. Unless we're having a winter like this and then I don't think I've worn like one of them. I know, I've hardly worn mine because it's just not been that cold. Yeah, but melt, I am uh, checking it out. The sun keeps coming out. That's why this we keep getting kind yeah, of washed light, out. Yeah, pretty bad. It, it was it's an overcast day, and then all of a sudden, whoo, the light comes in. Awesome. Oh, you done? Okay. I have two more, but you can go. Yeah, my turn. So I'm gonna stick with for the, my next um, dream knitting. Um, it's not knitting; it's crochet. Um, another granny. I love granny squares. I just do. And um, this pattern came out a while ago, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna crochet that. Um, you know, that's a great way to use your scraps. So that one is the, um, what's it called? Granny style. Yeah, MJ's off the hook design. Yeah, I just love it. I love her colors, so I'll probably end up doing something similar <laughs> close to it. Um, cause I did, that's what made me like, Ooh, well, I love that. And, um, I don't remember what yarn weight this is, but I'm telling you, it's not bulky. <laughs> Cause I'm not doing that again. This is I'm 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 roasting in this. We could open a window. We could for sure, <laughs> for sure. So yeah, it's um the Granny Cell cardigan by MJ's Off the Hook Designs, and we'll have that in our show notes. Yeah. All right. Some of my favorite tank tops, and I wore one yesterday, and I remember thinking to myself, like this is um I need new tank tops. Like this one's really worn. I love this as a staple in the wardrobe. So it's fingering weight, so it's a lot. I do like, um, you know, I'd probably do it in a black or in a navy um, because I would wear it under, you know, blazers for work. I would wear it on its own out, you know, when I'm on the pontoon or just hanging out. Um, but I love the construction. It just looks very professional mm -hmm. um, and very classic. And that's, I need to just, I, I'm really trying to knit right now on, based on like my wardrobe and what it needs and not like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to knit this or I want to knit that. And I'm, you know, so um, just things that I need. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I thought that would be a good one. I'm going to check out camisole number nine. And that is by um, my favorite, my favorite things. My favorite knits or my favorite things? My favorite things. All right. My next stream. And I actually, I will be honest. This was a whip. <laughs> I did cast this on. Um, and then it just, the yarn I had used, um, it, I didn't like the way that it was looking. I think, I honestly think that I would like to, um, I think last time we actually had yarn that we were going to try, you know, try to give ideas when we were doing our dream meeting. Maybe we didn't. I can't remember. but No, we did. Okay. And I thought about pulling yarn out, but um, honestly, the more I think about this, I think I would like a single ply for it. Um, anyways, this is from, um, wrapped up in cable sweater scarf, one of those wrappy things. Um, and it's from Knititude and I follow her. She's, she's, um, so fun to watch and, um, got, I've actually knit a couple of her. I've got a couple sweaters that I've done, um, from her too. Her patterns are great. She's a great designer. Um, and, uh, yeah, I am definitely going to. Um, make this, I think 
my I would like to have it done by Christmas because I would like to wear this to my husband's company Christmas party. I love it. I also see it being like a really like fun fall piece that you can just wear. You know, it's not quite cold enough, but it's just you need something. Yeah, she shows you. I think she's got some videos. There's a couple different ways you can wear it, um, which I love. But yeah, I think I want to do a single ply yarn for it and it's beautiful yeah all right my last dream knitting I could not resist putting in because this is our friend the lovely Corey Eckelberg who is I rock knits and she designed this lovely shawl mm -hmm. it's got some cabling down the center it's got beautiful pom-poms it's got a really wonderful um rib edging all the way around Let's see if I can show you some of those um, but it's called maize shawl, M A E apostrophe S. So maize shawl and that she designed it in the spirit of her mother-in-law. I think that's so amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, I bought the pattern. I just purchased it the other night and, um, I'm just deciding what I want to cast on. I see it for me and kind of a, um, kind of a rustic brown, very natural, like mm -hmm. something that um, is universal and I can what throw is, on. What is the yarn? Um, it is, well, she oh, designed DK. it in Lavender Loon, okay. who's our friend Sam. Mm -hmm. Lavender Loon, if you haven't played with her yarn, you are, you're missing out. I will mm -hmm. say it. She's got good stuff. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to wear my um, Lavender Loon sweater next time. Um, but she's got gorgeous yarn, but it's a DK in mm -hmm. Lavender Loon, so... But, you know, Corey did say, if you guys don't fo follow Corey on IROC Knit, um, you should. She's got a podcast. She's fabulous. She's a, a prolific designer. She's mm -hmm. got tons of designs. Mm -hmm. she, does, um, she does classes for local yarn shops all over the place and um, it really has a lot to impart and share with people and teach them. But she was saying on our last podcast that I watched that, you, I mean, certainly could play with weight and... You know, right. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a shawl, so can yeah. play with weight and all of the things. But one of the things I love, man, I've never been able to make a look at her. Um, my pom poms are. I know so I can't do a pom pom. <laughs> I know, They're like little bitty. Is it a pom pom? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm, it's a yeah. tic tac. They're never like it's terrible. But her pom poms are amazing. So some people are just doing yeah. on my count. I watch video and video and. I don't know. What am I doing wrong? So, so yeah. So those are our dream makes this time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we did um, get some comments uh, throughout about acquisitions. Some of you love it. We love it because, mm -hmm. and let me tell you why we love it. So we love it because this is our platform as a means and opportunity not to boast, mm -mm. not to show you how much money we spend on whatever mm -hmm. that's inconsequential. Mm -hmm. We love this community. Mm -hmm. We support this community. The dyers, the designers, the makers, all of the people who put their, their blood, sweat, and tears into what we get the benefit of reaping. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep showing stuff mm -hmm. all the time. Um, things that we buy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we buy a lot. Sometimes we don't. Yeah. We have yarn subscriptions. But here's what I would just say. This is where we all meet in the middle. We love each other. We respect each other. If you don't want to see our acquisitions, then we'll wish you farewell. Tell you thank you for watching. Yep. And um, and if you want to see what we've purchased, stick around because I have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, um, I'll I'll go first if you don't mind. Okay. Um. So Salt City Knits, Emily of Salt City Knits, is a lovely woman. Her sister Deborah is Candy Shop Yarns. If you've heard of Candy Shop Yarns, um, she's super talented too. But Emily not only has a podcast, but she is a, a dyer. Oh. And she's got Yarn Brary. The Yarn Brary. She's, um, if you watch her um, episodes or her podcast, she is a, oh, gosh. isn't that amazing? Yes. So, um, so good. I know. Um, she is a, um, yeah, she's just an incredible dyer. And it's so soft. The base is amazing. But that one is Plum Creek. And I, I also, <laughs> she just started um, dyeing yarn again, and I just couldn't not support her. Man, look at that. It is so pretty. Mm -hmm. Jen. I know. I will be casting this on fairly shortly. In fact, I'm going to do another, um, yeah, 
I'm gonna just do a vanilla because it just this is yarn that needs to like stand on its own. Yeah. Or even. Mm -hmm. Look at this. She speckled. Look at her speckles. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so Anyways, pretty. the Yarn Brewery, Emily, Salt City Knits is her podcast. If you want to go check her out, her base is super soft. But um, this is Maple Maple Sugar Party. And this one is uh, Plum Creek. So yeah, I, I cannot wait to cast them on. Okay. So mine, I want to talk about one of my oh, yeah. community service <laughs> acquisitions. Coffee. Um, I've been getting coffee from this company for quite a while. And um, I don't know if I was one of the first, but I met the owner at um, Indian Tangled. I walked up to her and I said, you know, I don't know if you know who I am, you know, or whatever you remember me, but I, I'm Karina and she knew and she said, I'm gonna give you a hug. And it was great. It's a great company. And didn't she know you because you supported her yep. from day one? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I was a barista for over 10 years. Uh, I love coffee. Um, I know beans because I, um, where I worked, they roasted their own beans. Um, I know what an old bean looks like and, and smells like. Um, and anyways, uh, these are wonderful. They're roasted. So good. Fresh, yummy. Um, yeah. And, uh, so it comes like this, the beans, um, you get them all like, like you, when you get your yarn, you know, a lot of times when you get yarn, it's wrapped up like this, yeah. with a little sticker. Uh, yeah, I just love it. And I, um, I think if, you know, and if you like coffee, you're going to love it. It's, it's really so good. Knitter's Blend. I'll have to try it. Are they beans? Beans. Yep. Whole beans. Oh my gosh. Look, there's a pattern on yep. the bottom. Mm -hmm. Basket weave knit. Smell it. Or basket weave knit. Smell it. Oh gosh! Oh my gosh! It does smell good. I ha I bought some at Indie Untangled. Oh, um, but you have the subscription, right? I don't. Oh, I just we where just, do you get it? Just so order I it order it. Um, you know, for Christmas we got um, it, um, everyone knows we love coffee, and then um, my husband's sister lives in um Bogota, Colombia, so she always sends us you know Colombian oh, coffee, um, and so we'll have a little stockpile of coffee around Christmas time, and so. Uh, yeah, I'll, I just, you know, during that, t those times, I'll, or if we travel sometimes, like, uh, when we, we like to go to Montana, I mean, that's home to me. And, um, and when we go, I like to, you know, the little coffee shops get their coffee and stuff. So I like, I like to be able to pause a little bit, but our staple coffee, the one that we're going, we know we're going to love and we get is th this. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, when, um, when your bestie and another friend of yours collab, you're um, you're obligated. The good news is, I don't feel obligated, but I'm like, you're gonna save one of those for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oops, backwards. Bags by Karina, this lovely lady. And again, this is my treadmill knitting, right? So it just, I love it. And um, this is Pearls and Pines yarn. It's a beautiful. Look at this. Does this not scream Easter? Totally. Yep. Although I'm not doing socks with this. So um, I have a couple of other colors. I'll bring it when I cast it on. But this paired with a couple of other. Um, there's a. Do you remember the Bloomington shawl you did? Yeah. Mm. It's been in my queue ever since you made it. But it's like in the picture. It's like a blue and a bright pink. And, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is going to be one of my accent colors, and yeah. I have two other colors that go beautifully with it. So I'll just put the mini away, but this speaks to those other two hanks. Um, so this was a collab. And honestly, um, Karina, do you want to tell them, um, there are some left, I would think. Yep. So do you want to tell well, them Well, when I looked yesterday, there was still a couple left, and Pearls and Pine on her website so um, we'll have it down below. Yep. Um, because the link is also, um, yeah, it'll be in our acquisition acquisitions, but Pearls and Pines. I got the September, September, oh my Lord. Um, I got the <laughs> February bag and there's just this theme of gnomes in, in the patterns that Karina's bringing forth. So I love that. And 
the yarn, the Pearls and Pines yarn. You yeah, it won't always be gnomes, but I, again, I told you guys at the beginning. I love the chocolate bunnies. They're I love bunnies. So cute. And when I saw this fabric, I just had to. So, um, it's really cute. The gnomes holding little bunnies and the chocolate bunnies. Are. And look at these stitch markers. They're so fun. They're progress keepers, call them what yeah. you want. Like, mm -hmm. they're so good. So yeah. that's fun. And, um, I tell, you know, I say I do it to support you and Angie do it because it's I love it <laughs> and I want it <laughs> so, yeah so yeah oh is it my turn it is um oh yeah a little a brain pause there where was I going oh yeah you get I was gonna talk about in the when you get um the coffee you get um a lot of times you get a little um stitch marker or whatever and this time I also got a button she's got the Pearl Scouts buttons there I didn't have this oh, one yet. And you have I have a Pearl bunch Scouts. There right there. Yeah. Pearl Scouts from Northfield Yarn in um, Northfield, Minnesota. Um, but yeah, this time I got this this one from from the Knit Coffee. And um, yeah, so I didn't want to um, show this last time because it was too close to when I got the box. Um, the Yarn Bliss box. Um, I... I, I can't, I, it's so. Look at the tissue paper even. The tissue paper. The little birds. Yeah, sometimes I say the tissue paper. Actually, I shared a, a reel about where you took white candles and then you. I saw that. Yeah, and then you. you that and would I, be amazing. I think you could do the tissue paper with it, but. So um, basically like you take the white candle, you put the tissue paper. And then you iron it and on. And then you put like wax paper over it and yeah. then iron it. Yeah, something like that. Brilliant. Yeah. I know I went to Joanne's yesterday <gasps> looking for, um, yeah, I knew you'd love that. Oh, this is my damn right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You might be an episode of Dateline. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, where'd she go? I don't know. She was last seen with her best friend yeah. showing off a yarn in a colorway she really liked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. She just... All, all the time it is every every month I am very happy with with and it's you just go oh my goodness and then you always get little goodies um comes in here I have this sticker from Angie maybe at her it's store. so cute isn't it yeah. little bird theme um there is in this one there is um look at the back of the card I love birds I've turned I've turned into I've th there's a joke about that but I have bird feeders in my yard and a, and a fountain that they come in to. And I'll be like, oh, look, look at, look, look at the birds. <laughs> I just love them. Um, look at you and your granny squares totally seeing the birds. <laughs> I'm a granny. I am a granny. <laughs> I embrace that. I'm so, so lucky to be a granny. I, that's how I feel. That's what I'm going to say. And I really mean it. Um, little scissors this time. And, oh, that's cute. I hadn't even really looked at that yet. So cute. Oh, that's pretty. And the sticker, yeah, the sticker we. So that all came in this, and I just, I, I'm so excited. I'm like a kid when I know that box is in my mailbox. I want to see what kind of goodies I get this month. I love it. Mm -hmm. You are influencing me to get this box. No, I've talked to you about it several times. You have, and that's. I love it is... so much. You know, I would, I would, I would do a trade with you. We could talk about it later. Yeah, we're a hundred percent. It's going down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I I just said love linen quill. Um Pearl Soho, when they do their 30% off, mm -hmm. can the candy store happens, can't help it, buy all the things, whatever. Love me, hate me, don't care. Um, mm -hmm. but when you can get us when you can get three sweater quantities for under $90 you go. So this, this is a new base for me, um, from them, but it is sweet grass and it's 65% organic cotton and 35% super fine alpaca. It's delicious. Here, hold that. Like it's, it's, it's so, so soft. soft. So you might, you might remember last week I had the, um, beautiful moon glow, uh, yarn co. It was like a blue sapphire color that I was gonna do the Ziva tea in, and it's really dark colored. 
I'm gonna do the Ziva T in this instead because it's so light. All of that um, lace work down the side. I wish you guys. I wish we had feel a vision. I know. I wish you could feel it. It's and phenomenal. smell sometimes. You know, you just oh, so smell it. Yeah, it does smell good. Yeah, it does. We just smelled yarn in front yeah. of ten thousand people. <laughs> anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you wanna? Do you want me to? I'm gonna finish my Pearl Soho order. Yeah, shot off. So this is linen quill. Again, I've made um, all the things in linen quill. I love the heathered look. I love the, um, I just love everything about it. This is pine cone, the colorway pine cone. Again, the 50% Highland wool, 35% alpaca and 15% linen. So sweaters quantity, don't know what I'll do with it. Something good. And this is my favorite. So it is called lavender opal. Again, linen quill, same blend. I see this being um, a colorwork sweater with some of maybe some of my hand spun on the top. Mm. We'll see. Mm. So yeah, so that was my linen quill. Fun. Okay, I'm gonna talk about a friend of ours, someone local here to Bemidji. Um, she has a subscription box too, so I have signed up for that. Jen, or yeah, you did too. I did too, yeah. I just didn't bring mine because you were showing me. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So um, it's um, Katie of um, Hummingbird Yarn. Um, I got a little the little note, a little card. It's so cute. It's and there's so a little um, egg. You know, I love Easter. Um, I loved that stitch marker. Yeah, so cute. Um, that, I got that in there. And here I, I should show this. Look at that. It's DK. So she was just doing fingering weight. And, you know, I have so much fingering and I, I said you know if you if you do the DK I will sign up I will and so yeah she did that and now um now we both have it <laughs> yep DK um it's so pretty so so pretty I just love it she did such a good job um you got uh, there was a little chocolate I haven't eaten that yet <laughs> what was the chocolate I don't know it's like a little bonbon um you know, I wonder if it's from Chocolates oh, Plus. Oh, it's from Chocolates Plus. Um, I shared mine. You shared, yeah. yeah. I'll probably, I'll probably eat it. <laughs> I it's was worth the calories. I was it's waiting. So um, at, uh, but yeah, Chocolates Plus here in Bemidji. Um, they, it's amazing. They, um, a lot, a lot of our friends. Uh, we got Christmas Chocolates Plus for presents from there, um, from our friends, and so we had quite the abundance of it at Christmas time. And I sent, I sent it to work with my husband because like. It's too dangerous. I the know, the, the so chocolate covered potato chips, like oh, I'm just gonna eat one, one little bite, and then it's like those potato chips are still over there, and finally, it's, Micah, take it. I know it's hard. Yeah, self control is hard as we round out yeah. acquisitions. It was just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Last acquisition, we promise. So. Um, this is the subscription box from our friend Angie, Pearls and Pines. If you can't support your friends. Yeah. You know, here in Bemidji. Yeah. She's here in she's Bemidji. She's amazing. She's going to be opening a yarn shop. I know. So exciting. Very exciting to have she a was, yarn shop again. Yeah. She was the one last time I was telling you guys that she just got picked up by the Yarnery and Yarn Harbor. Mm -hmm. They have since um, put in more orders. Like, go Angie. Mm -hmm. So this one is fun it's also a dk weight and it appropriately is called leprechaun kisses how good is that yeah i got this one too yeah it's so when i got home from picking it up i was i had to text her i'm like i'm not a fan of green but that is awesome oh i'm a green girl yeah i know i love okay so stitch markers in the box the Aww. little bunny yeah Oh yeah. I've Did you get this one? Yes. Oh. Something similar. Cause I was like, yeah, if you didn't get it, I was going to give it to you. Cause you're a bunny girl. No, I do. I've got mine right here. I like this little shamrock too. It's like, Oh, like, I have the exact same one as you. I knew I'd seen that. I was like, Oh, this is so, so cute, but I got it too. Know, little bunny. Yep. So yeah. So that is, um, that is all the acquisitions. My acquisitions I am holding in, I think Karina showed you hers last time. Uh, but this is my Atenti bag, Atenti bag from Sweater Camp. I saw this first on um, the Skein, the Skein Scoop podcast. So the Skein Yarn Shop in Rhode Island mm -hmm. with Lori and, um, oh, 
that's terrible. I just forgot her name when it starts with a J. I'll think of it and then I'll kick myself. Um, but, and she has her own channel too. It's um, Never Not Knitting in Rhode Island. Um, but anyway, so love this bag. Saw it on their podcast. Wasn't going to pull the trigger on it because it was expensive. Like it's a bag I'll have for a lifetime. But I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But when I experienced it in person mm -hmm. at sweater camp, I was like, done deal. Like mm -hmm. I'm on a budget this weekend and this is part of that budget. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that's all we yeah. have for yeah. you guys this time. And, um, we want to thank you again for all of your kindness and support. I, it is beyond. It's Blown just, away. I yeah. Totally. Beyond words. I love it that how all those comments were just so uplifting and so so positive and supportive yeah. and i love that in our community yes. that we uh, are knitting and our crafting community you know um it's amazing it is so it's so good yeah make um all the things lift each other up support your community mm -hmm. and um support this yarn community for sure but um, we are so happy you spent this time with us. We'll be back in three weeks. We're going to try that, right? Like yep. our cadence is going to be every three weeks and life's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and We're going to postpone and reschedule and that's mm -hmm. fine too. But we're really committed to every three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, keep the comments coming. We, yes, we read Love every them. one and responded to every single one. Um, so um, like, subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications. We would love to hear from you. Check out our Instagram page, Knitting Up North with Jenna Karina. We do um, little polls every once in a while. Mm -hmm. We'll show our FOs there after mm -hmm. our podcast so you can refer back to them. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. it. And yep. until next time, make what brings you joy. Thanks everybody. Bye.